Hi, um, I'm Evan. I'm the person behind Find My Ancestry. I thought I would show my face here because I haven't posted any videos in a while and just say a little bit about who I am and then I'll get into the topic for today's video, um, how I use eBay to look for my ancestors. Um, like I said, my name's Evan. I've always loved history. I've always been interested in family history and genealogy, um, but Ancestry.com wasn't really a thing when I was growing up because when I was born in the late 80s. Um, but when my paternal grandmother passed away in 2007, uh, she talked a lot about her heritage. Um, she was of German background, Prussian. Um, she talked a lot about um, sneaking, learning German growing up from her Tante Emma, her Aunt Emma. And I just really missed her and... I wanted to feel close to her, and so I got a little Ancestry, ancestry um, subscription in 2007. I don't know how I afforded it, actually, because I was a college student. I think it was a lot cheaper, and I was doing, like, um, monthly or quarterly payments or something. But anyhow, um, I did not know what I was doing, um, but I remember sitting in my apartment bedroom in college, like searching for ancestors. <laughs> I don't think I knew any friends who were doing that, so, um, which I didn't understand. I don't know how anyone can think their family history isn't interesting. Um, and since then, I have, so 2007, what's that, like 16 years ago? I'm all self-taught, but I have learned a lot in that time. Um, I've done the hobby pretty consistently off and on that whole time, rarely taking more than I don't know. I guess a year off would be like my biggest gap in, in research. Um, and then, I don't remember, five or six years ago, I started Find My Ancestry to share what I'd learned with people and um, tips and tricks and also to share about my own family members because I think they're interesting and lived interesting lives. Um, and if I didn't, obviously, why would I do this? But So that's a little bit about me. Um, I consider this work to be really my life's work other than being a mom and wife and my day job. I'm actually an attorney, um, but I really think of the work I'm doing to research and preserve my family history and genealogy for future generations. I think of that um, as really as my life's work. And recently I've started realizing the amount of information I've amassed and started really organizing it for the first time using some tools from um, Family Tree Notebooks. Um, it's an account on here and she has a social media account. And I'm so sorry her first name's escaping right now, which is terrible because I've been following her for years. But look up Family Tree Notebooks. I'm not an affiliate of hers or anything. Just she has really great tools and I'm not naturally organized. She is like I really look up to her for being a really organized person, especially when it comes to genealogy. So that's a little bit about me and where I'm at right now. And I'm going to share a little bit with you about how I research ancestors on eBay, which um, I think it's getting a little more popular, but it's definitely not the first thing people think of when they start researching their family tree. Um, and it is a little bit unorthodox, the things I'm looking for and finding. I'm not um, using it like Ancestry where I just type in, you know, a name and a location. I might do that. And I'm not looking for the same types of records. I'm looking for things like um, what's called ephemera, like um, pictures or um, tickets or directories, um, postcards, books, things like that. Um, so, yeah, I'm not looking like for census records like I do on Ancestry. Although, there are some census records I've seen on eBay that I have not seen available um, on Ancestry or Family Search, so I'll get into that a little bit later. But for now, I'm going to switch to a um, picture of my screen to show you some things I recently bought and how I'm using them for family history, and I will show you one of them at the end. On my eBay, and this is some of my re these are some of my recent purchases. The first thing I'm going to show you is the picture I told you about. I'm going to click on that here. And it is, I'm going to scroll down here because it's sold. So here we go. So this is a real photo of Devon, Kentucky's Doherty Store gas station postcard copy. Got a lot of keywords in that title. So 
I'm going to hover over this photo just to show you all the really neat details. They sold groceries, meats, looks like there's gas. It's a general store. You got the cool old Coca-Cola sign. There is, I don't even know if that's a woman or a man, but probably a man if I had to guess. The owner, the proprietor. There's an old ladder over here. Oh, and there's a man. I just noticed this. Wow. There is a man at the top painting or repairing, doing some kind of repairs to the building. So how does this pertain to genealogy? I think I already mentioned that this is probably not any kind of direct ancestor of mine. However, I am related to the Doherty's of northeastern Kentucky. This is very close to the area that I'm looking in, the county and the town. The spelling of the name is right. The surname is correct. There are a lot of different spellings of Doherty. You might even be a Doherty yourself. Um, but given that the name is right and the spelling and it is the geographic location that I'm interested in, I'm kind of confident that this would be a, at least a distant cousin of mine. So that's still really interesting for me in terms of researching my genealogy. This is ephemera, so it's not, you know, a direct uh, record, not a primary source or anything like that, not, you know, but it's just something neat to have, and it's a little piece of history, and even though it's just a copy of a photo, I think it's cool. I'm going to frame it and hang it in my office, along with some other genealogical things, and for eleven ninety nine and a couple bucks for shipping to own a little clip of history, that's definitely worth it for me. So let me go back and show you the books that I bought recently, and then I'll show you how I do a couple searches on here to look for ancestors as well. So... Here are two purchases I made not long after I bought that picture. These are 250 books worth of Kentucky history, genealogy, folk tales, even books about the geography and the geology of Kentucky. Let me just click on one to show you. These are from the same seller. And what these listings are for are books on DVD. So someone has taken all of these books, scanned them painstakingly, into PDF format, PDF format, then that was put onto a DVD. I know you're probably thinking, wow, DVD, um, my computer doesn't even have that. My computer actually doesn't either. I have a MacBook Air. So what I did and what you can do if you want to buy books like this on DVD, go ahead and purchase it. You can take it to a library, um, another place, any place you can get access to a computer with a CD drive. What I did, and you can do this too, I borrowed a laptop that had a CD drive. My dad's laptop happened to have one. He has an old, inexpensive laptop. He really doesn't use much. That's what I did. And another option for you, if you have a Mac and you don't mind investing in a piece of equipment that you might use again, um, Mac sells these little, they honestly look like DVD players, but they can be hooked up to Mac computers to get access to DVD and CD discs. <coughs> I forget the name of what they're called. That's another option. So what I did was with my dad's laptop, I put the CD in. Then I bought a little flash drive off of Amazon with lots of memory on it. And I can link the flash drive in the video notes. Um, at plenty of memory for all 250 books with lots of memory to share. I put that in at the same time as the CD. I just went to the computer um, devices on the computer and I dragged all the files from that CD drive to the flash drive and now I have it I can use that flash drive with my MacBook Air to go through these books and let me show you what some of these are Society Kentucky Society of Colonial Wars History of Jessamine County Louisville a glimpse of Kentucky History of Kentucky and I'll just scroll through a few more give you an idea here so I haven't found any of my direct ancestors yet in these books, but if you were to find one, here are some things you might find. Here is a cool little sketch portrait of this guy. Can't even read the name. Let me go up to this one. Okay, well, here we go. Famous one, Daniel Boone. Let's say you're related to Daniel Boone. He's going to be in a lot of books, but this one in particular has this neat little sketch. This is the life of Daniel Boone. Founder of the state of Kentucky. And we have this guy over here, Colonel William McKee, Rockbridge County, Virginia. 
So this is actually the McKees of Virginia and Kentucky. So that's interesting because if you're looking for someone from Kentucky, like I haven't typed in Virginia, but because I looked at Kentucky, this book popped up. So don't forget to search nearby states when you're doing searches and not just the ones where you know your ancestors lived because there's a little bit of overlap. That's something I need to keep in mind myself. I'm going to show you another page of portraits from one of these books. Fayette Hewitt, Charles Hodge, William No, W.F. Peak. You can read the names underneath the portraits. Obviously, a disadvantage in this type of thing is there's probably not going to be any women in it. Uh, for doing female research, it is a little harder, but if you can find a husband, then you can usually uh, hopefully find a little bit about the wife as well. And unfortunately, that's just the reality of researching people from the 19th century and beforehand. So this is interesting. I see this little guy's portrait and you see his name's Doherty, W.H. Doherty, M.D. Again, he is not a direct descendant of mine, but I am pretty sure he is a cousin and I'm trying to figure out how we are related. In fact, his picture is familiar to me. He, he looks, he resembles some of the ancestors that I have pictures of from the same time period in the same area and the name. So I'm fairly confident we are distantly related, and that alone to me is worth the price of, what, $12.99 for all of these books. I mean, think how cost-effective this is, how much it would cost you in terms of not just money but time and effort to find 124 books of this type. And this is just volume one, so I got about 250 of them. Oh, there's a woman I want to show you. So here we go. Virginia... Staniford Caperton. Now that is a really neat portrait if this is an ancestor of yours. If you have a very prominent female ancestor, you're obviously going to have better luck finding them. But even then, it's I find it to be quite rare. <coughs> Some other book titles. Reminiscences of a Soldier of the Orphan Brigade. Early Catholic Missions of Kentucky. Life in the Hills of Kentucky. Going back to the Catholic missions of Kentucky, our ancestors didn't live in a vacuum. They had beliefs and belief systems and searching things like church records and books about religious denominations of the time and the area your ancestors lived in can be a really good way to get an idea for their lives. And you might even find names in some of these. Let me scroll on a little bit more. Now this book... It's really neat. It has an actual genealogy of the Boone family. So, if you are a Boone, I mean, this type of thing would be a must-have, in my opinion. And in fact, if you are a Boone and you happen to be watching this video, just let me know and I will somehow get you the files. No problem. Because these are really neat and people should have them. So, I could go on and on about this, but let me go back to the other listing and just show you I got another 126 books such a steal so with shipping even paying for the flash drive that I had to buy let's say I spent a total of $35 to have 250 books who knows how long it'll take me to sift through all of these to try and find the things I'm looking for but that I'm just looking forward to as a family historian and that's what I love to do so Look at this beautiful cover, the Bluegrass Region of Kentucky. Of course, I don't own the covers. That would be awesome. But honestly, I don't know many people who have the room in their houses to keep 250 books like this. That may be in my next dream house or something. Kentucky History, Sisters of Charity of Nazareth, Kentucky. Let me try and show you a few more before I go and move on to how I do searches for other things. Now, this is neat. A biographical sketch of Colonel Richard Johnson liberating an unfortunate debtor back when there was a debtor's prison. So this just gives you an idea. Kentucky superstitions. I mean, this is really what I mentioned, geography and geology. There's Mammoth Cave. This is just really kind of a well-rounded selection of books, and I'm so excited to dig into all these. I have started searching through the PDF files just by name looking up the names that are my surnames I'm interested in, like Kofer, Doherty, McClure, Farmer, Collins, Callahan. Um, and I found a few matches, so that's exciting. But 
it will take me years really to pour through all these. And again, for $35, you just can't beat it. Moving on, I'm going to show you a technique I use to find photographs on eBay. I'm going to search for something I look for a lot. Chicago grocery stores of the late 19th century. So I had family um, that came from England, London, England in 1885. My great great grandparents came to America. They opened up a grocery store in the West Loop neighborhood, now the West Loop neighborhood of Chicago. So just north of the river. My great grandfather was actually born on a boat in Navy Pier as they were coming here. Um, and that's a document and it's not just family lore, it really happened. So I'm very interested in this time period of Chicago. Haven't found a picture of their specific store yet, but I'm going to show you why it's neat to find examples, even if they don't exactly match your family. So this is kind of a more well-to-do store. My family was, obviously, they were immigrants, they so wouldn't have had anything quite this nice because they didn't have much money. But here is an example of what a really nice grocery bakery would look like back then. There are a few people in the picture. I assume they are some of the names. This is, uh, what is the name? Truesdell. Truesdell. So this is Cabinet Photograph 1890s Grocery Store. And then this does have the name of Truesdell and Vanderburg in Chicago, Illinois. It says um, the condition is where on the cardboard edge, which I expect with historical photos. And the other picture, if you're lucky, will ID Lillian Russell Herbert. So we see that name is on the back. Let's see if there's a woman in this photo. I think there's a woman right back there between the two men. At some point, someone ID this photograph with her name. So that is really cool. So that goes to show you that let's say if you were just looking for her name, that name is not going to show up in the search result probably because she's not listed in the title. So I would encourage you to think broader when you're looking for things like this, like Chicago grocery store, 1890s. And look, it might take some time, but look at the backs of photographs. If you're lucky, you'll find a seller, sellers who will say in the title of the item ID'd or IDs, and that will mean the photo's been identified because this one has identification markers, but it's not in the title. So just keep that in mind when you're looking for these photos online. Let me go back and show you another search result with a photo in it. Let me see. Okay, so this one, I have this saved. You can see there's a little heart. If you want to save anything to your watch list, just click this heart. <coughs> That'll be saved to your watch list. I'm going to click on this picture of Chicago South Water Street Market in 1910. It's a postcard copy of an old photo, so it's not an original. Again, that really doesn't bother me for my purposes. So this is not too far from the area my family would have been and when they had their grocery store and theirs were probably more like these. Not quite as fancy, a little more small potatoes, I guess you would say, but this is the open air market. And you can see what Chicago looked like. I mean, there's horse-drawn carriages in Chicago in 1910. That is neat. You can see what people wore, an idea of kind of the hustle and bustle um, of what that looked like for them. So I can kind of picture what my ancestors' work lives were like in running that family grocery store. So even though they're not in this picture to my knowledge, I have added this to my watch list because I might purchase it just as a little snapshot of history. So those are an example of a specific search. And I'm going to show you another one. I'm going to look up cabinet cards. A cabinet card is, you've probably seen them and just not known what a cabinet card was, but they're basically portraits. Like if you went to like J.C. Penney's and had a portrait of yourself taken and your mom hung it up, you know, on the nightstand or whatever, that's the cabinet cards of the Victorian era in the late 19th century were. There are a lot of cabinet cards listed on eBay. I recommend searching by geographic location. And if you're lucky to know the name of the photographer, sometimes that will be listed in the title. This first one says cabinet photo Wilson photography. So there's the photographer's name. Chicago, Illinois headshot of woman vintage. And I want to find one maybe that says ID on it. 
I can show you an example of what I was talking about earlier. Oh, this one says it's possibly signed, so that's interesting. Here's a whole family. Now here is a post-mortem wreath and photo. So it's a picture of the wreath from the funeral and his photo is inside of it. Another curiosity if you're interested in that kind of thing. Now this is cool. A woman's group of pilgrim maidens. Let's see what that was. <coughs> so if you knew you had a female ancestor that belonged to this group, you could search Chicago pilgrim maidens. She's very serious looking. All right. And then there's some close-ups of each woman. And then, yes, we're really lucky. So this has been ID'd. Here's what I wanted to show you. This title, ID. That means the photos have names or a name on the back. Obviously, we can't really know for sure how accurate they are. Some of them are incomplete. They'll have one name and a picture of 10 people. But if you want to definitely narrow that search down by IDs, you can try that. But again, keep in mind that first picture I showed you of the grocery store that had the ID on the back, but it didn't say ID in the title. So don't lose hope if you see a picture that does not have ID in the listing. Make sure you look at the back because there might still be ID on it. Here are the names. Uh, Mildred Alden, Dorothy Fuller, Priscilla Allen, Alden, Be Beatrice Neely, and Faith Putnam. So this would just be just an awesome find if, if these were your relatives and you were looking for them. I will warn you, some of these types of more specific things, especially items that have IDs on them, are more money. But if you're like me, I, I to be honest, I probably would not think twice about buying this. I may make the seller an offer. This one doesn't have it on this listing, but a lot of eBay listings are a certain price or best offer. And I would recommend not insulting the sellers with your offers. Maybe go 10 to 15% lower than the asking price. Um, but you, sometimes you can get a deal that way. I'm going to show you one more search. Oh, wow. Look, at before I do that, look at this. An antique cabinet card photograph. The first black American nurse in Chicago. What an incredible photo. Artie A. Poland. Now, this is very, very, very expensive. This is a piece of history, but again, this just goes to show you like the treasures that are on eBay when it comes to history, genealogy, and family history, and researching your family tree. Now I'm going to show you a little bit about how to look for family Bibles on eBay. Family, I'm going to do a search of family Bible, Indiana. I am from Indiana. I want to see the listings in Indiana. You can also narrow it down by name. I'm just going to go by location. So book family maps of St. Joseph, Indiana. That's not a Bible. Here are, let's see, if you were from Jasper County, Indiana, here are some Bible records that have been volumized, so that's very neat. But here's what I wanted to show you. And these will be more expensive, but you can find real, true, antique family Bibles. And like I said, I've seen them listed as high as $1,500. So, you know, they're pretty expensive. But again, if, if I found one that I knew was my ancestor, I would think very seriously about purchasing something like this. It's, it's basically priceless, in my opinion. I mean, look at the back. There are family portraits. That's incredible. I mean, they're not ID'd, but if you knew more about this, to me, you basically can't put a price on it. And sometimes there'll be annotations. Oh, this is a German Bible. I actually have a German Bible as well from my ancestors. So this is just really a piece of history. And again, yeah, another example. I could show you many, many listings for Bibles on eBay. But these are just some examples about how you can find your ancestors on eBay. I'm going to go back to the video and show you that picture that I bought here. Okay, I'm back here. Face video. Sorry, I have some in my eye. Um, so I have the picture that I showed you that I bought off eBay of the Doherty General Store gas station. Take it out of the, the plastic here and pull the camera up. 
So you can see it is just a copy of a photo, but I'm not, I mean, the original would be cool to have, but I just think it's more the details in the photo that I can enjoy and look at. And the, like I said, that Coca-Cola sign, I just love pretty much everything about it. So I'm definitely going to frame this, hang it up with some other genealogy stuff in my office. Doherty's General Store and Gas Station. Again, like I said, probably not owned, pretty much definitely not owned by a direct descendant, but I am pretty sure it's got to be like a cousin or something. Some other things you can find on eBay that I meant to mention earlier, uh, family Bibles. I would recommend searching not just by location, but by name, and then by just name and just location. Um, and if you're really feeling ambitious, you can even look at Pictures that have not been ID'd. Like when I showed you that Chicago 1890 grocery store search I did on eBay. Um, so you can look through photos that just haven't been ID'd. I know I mentioned you can write ID or ID'd in the search parameters. But sometimes I just scroll, scroll through pictures from a time frame and a location that I'm looking at. And not that I necessarily know what these people look like, but sometimes I think maybe there is a an identification on the back of the picture and the seller on eBay has just neglected not for any nefarious reason but just hasn't put ID in the title so maybe it has I've come across pictures that actually have been ID'd but the title doesn't say ID in the picture so that's something else to think about and I mentioned census records earlier like that's something you would normally look for on ancestry however I am watching an item on eBay oh I'm waving this um, that is a Pendleton County, Kentucky census from 1850. And the seller is listing it for a very high price, so I'm just kind of keeping an eye on it, and I might make an offer at some point. Um, but other things you can look for, like I mentioned earlier, um, ephemera, like um, tickets or pay stubs or invoices, journals, letters, diaries, postcards, photographs, um, certain types of photographs, such as cabinet cards. Those were like a Victorian era portrait. Um, usually people posed and sitting up and people would place them in their cabinets, why they're called cabinet cards. Um, sometimes, um, it's kind of morbid, but people took photos of their loved ones when they had passed away. Um, not that, I don't know if you'd even be wanting to search for that, but if it's something you're interested in, that is something that's out there. Um, yearbooks. Um, I mentioned family Bibles also. Um, items from family reunions. I came across a whole bunch of pictures from an Amos family reunion in Indianapolis. My paternal grandfather's last name was Amos. We are an Indianapolis family, so those were my family pictures. It was really cool that someone who wasn't related to us purchased them at an estate sale. Otherwise, I'm, they probably would have just gone in the trash. So that's something else you can look for. But when it comes to eBay and genealogy, one thing I would say is just think outside the box. Don't get hung up on looking for Joe Smith, born in this year, died on this in this year, in this place. Be a little more broad in your search terms, at least to start, and then narrow it down if you want. And don't forget things like this can just be fun. That's not my ancestor, but it's something that calls to mind what their you know, their lives would have been like in the location that they're from. So I think that's it for me for today. Thank you for sticking around. I know I've been a video in a while. I'd like to do more of these. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more, what you'd like to see. Um, yeah, happy hunting. Hope you find everyone and everything you're looking for. And don't forget to look on eBay.